In this video, we're going to go over how to get the Ultimate Radio Menu to work in your project. At first, we'll talk about the most simple way to get the Ultimate Radio Menu to call your own functions, but it's going to be very limited and requires a more static menu setup. But after that, we'll talk about the Ultimate Radio Button Info class and how we can use that to not only add buttons at runtime, but also communicate with the button on the radio menu to update icons and text. So in my scene, I already have an ultimate radial menu, and I have an object that's rotating so that we can see when the game is paused or not. Additionally, I have a simple script with a pause game function that basically sets the time scale according to if it is paused or not. And as we can see in our scene, if I click on this default Unity button at the top, it pauses and plays the game accordingly. So if you want the radial menu to function just like this Unity button, um, it's very, very simple, um, very limited, but very simple. So if you just find your radial menu in your scene, go to the radial button list section, and then find the button that you want to use for this function, and then find the Unity events section at the bottom, click the plus sign, drag your object into the object field, and then choose the function. And so now if I play the game again, you can see that when I click on the radial menu, it pauses um, just like this button at the top. But just like the, the default Unity button, it's very limited. You can't change the text um, to say play, you can't change any icons, anything like that. It just simply invokes the function that you want. So with just a little bit of changes in the code, uh, we can actually use this button info class to communicate with the button on the menu. So let's remove this Unity event. So now it won't call that pause. And let's go into our script. So the first thing that we would want to do is just create a new sprite for uh, pause sprite and then another one for play sprite uh, so that these will be the sprites that we'll change it to um, when the button is interacted with when it's played or paused. And then we'll create a public ultimate radial button info class and let's name it button info. Now without implementing it or anything, if we go back into our um, scene, let that compile and go to our object, you can see that now we have a button info um, variable here and we can assign certain things. So just by default, let's make the name pause and then let's assign these sprites here. So I'm gonna to go to our example sprites for settings and let's assign the pause and let's assign the play. So now we got all that assigned um, and I guess we can uh, hit this as well, put that into the icon down there. And then let's go back into our script. So first thing that we wanna do is we want to, actually we need to go back into our scene and let's go down into the script reference section and I actually already have this assigned, but we're going to put in pause menu to the radial menu name. Um, and this is in the scripture reference section, like we talked about in the introduction video, um, has the example code for you to be able to copy and paste into your script. So once you get the name into here, let's just go down to this example code and copy this. And then let's go back into here and in our start function, let's paste. So now this is registering um, some button information to the radial menu. And you can see we have a little error right here because this is not actually a function. So it's asking us what function we want to be able to be called when we interact with this button. So let's provide it with our pause game uh, um, function. So now if we just go back into um, Unity, let that compile and press play, we can see that now when we click on this, it does the same thing as when we assigned the event but now we have access to a lot more. So let's go back into our script and let's just, to be really simple, um, let's just call button info because once we pass in the button info parameter to this register button, it will actually uh, modify this. So now that when we access this, we can communicate with the button that it's associated with. So first off, let's just do uh, update icon. So when we hit this, right, this is the time scale is one. So the game is playing. So let's uh, change this to our play sprite. And then in the same way, when we press it again, let's go back to our pause sprite. So let's go back into Unity. Let that compile. And now when we press play, you can see our sprite changes. So just even with that one line of code added into that, I guess two, um, we've made it to where the button will now update the icon and show the player um, that it's paused or it's currently playing. 
Uh, but let's also do this. Let's do button info dot update text. Now we can change this to play. And then also when we press the play, let's go back to it saying pause. And now if we go back and let it compile, when we press play, we can see that now the text is updating correctly. So it's really, um, it doesn't take much to have a button info class into or variable into any of your um, use cases. But now once you provide that to the radio menu, you can communicate with the button. We can even select it. So let's do button info dot select button. And then down in here, we'll deselect it. So let's do deselect. And then we'll compile this, press play. And now we can see that it becomes green highlighted when it's actually paused. So it really gives that the player a lot more um, sense of what, what has been done, right? And it's actually, um, it's worth noting that um, all these functions are inside of the documentation. If you go back to the radio button info class, all of these are in here with example code and everything of how you can use it um, updating icon text, description, um, selecting it, deselecting it, and so forth. So um, it's, it doesn't take that much to add in a button info um, variable into it, and that allows you to be able to communicate with it afterwards, even removing it from the menu or other things like that. So it can be used for items if you have a bunch of potions or even in weapon wheel situations or something else like that. And it's worth mentioning that uh, along with these, there are example scenes um, for how to make it work with um, different types of things. So this capsule man example scene is uh, populating the menu with items and you can uh, use those items and then it goes away off the menu when there's no more. Um, so we have a bunch of examples uh, to help show how to make it work with a bunch of different things. So Hopefully this is helpful. Helpful. It goes through the simple, most simple way to reference the ultimate radial menu, but also a little bit more of the usual, um, might be a little bit more complex way, but it allows you to communicate with the radial menu. So hopefully this video was helpful and we'll see you in the next one.